Hi, this is Michelle Sam from Sammy Wong's Kitchen. Today I am going to continue with our sourdough baking 101 series and we're going to be talking about the basic utensils and equipment for sourdough. So let's get started. So first, um, what we need for sourdough are a few things. And if you are very new to sourdough, I would highly recommend just the basics. And then if you decide that you really like sourdough baking and you can see the difference in the sourdough bread, which I'm sure you will, then you can start adding on to your inventory. What do we need? First and foremost, we need a digital scale. Even though most recipes might have the equivalent of the flour in cups, depending on how you put the flour into a cup, it can range for a difference of about 50 grams. And 50 grams can make the difference between a doorstop bread loaf or a nice soft and moist bread loaf. So I highly recommend a digital scale. So what to look for in a digital scale? Unfortunately, this particular scale that I have, they no longer make it and I love it. So what you need to see in the features for the digital scale is that it has a big surface area. And not only does it have a big surface area, the actual numbers that are on the scale is away from the weighing part. So you can see the weight of the ingredient. So if I had to have, so this one is probably about a five inch diameter. This one is a square, but if I use my bowl here, my uh, mixing bowl, I would put that on here and you can see that I wouldn't have to like really try to look at the, the numbers. The numbers will be clearly visible down on the bottom. So get a decent digital scale. This will really help you a lot. And you really need a digital scale in your kitchen if you want to have accurate baking recipes. So digital scale is the first thing. And then we do need a big bowl. I use this plastic container for my bread making and it, the diameter is big enough so I can actually do the stretch and folds in this bowl. This is a six liter plastic food container and it does come with a lid. So what I have done, I have weighed this on the scale, just this part, and I have used a magic marker. Magic markers are really key and written the, the weight of the container here. So when you need to maybe half the dough and you don't want to take it out, or if you have ingredients here and you don't want to remove them in order to figure out exactly how much ingredients you have, you can just do the math and minus the container weight. The key is to weigh your container and put the weight of, of the container with Sharpie. The next thing you'll need are plastic containers. I don't really like buying special containers for certain things. I like to recycle. These are food containers that you get for takeout with lids and I keep a bunch of them. This is helpful to just store your food like your starter food. So here is my flour mix that I use to feed my starter. And then you can also use this if you're going to add some seeds and the seeds need to be weighed as well as rehydrated. You can store that overnight in these containers. And it's helpful once again to also put the weights of these containers on the bottom. I just happen to know that it's uh, 31 grams and 15 grams. So those are the plastic containers. Okay, moving on to actual bread making. If you are new to sourdough baking, I would highly recommend getting a set. And I have the set on my Amazon store, which I highly recommend because I've looked through many of the sets and some of the items that they sell in the set is really not necessary. And if you wanna buy it separately, that's perfectly fine. But 
I did find a set that has all of the items plus one extra, which, you know, to me, I don't really think is necessary, but you can still use it. This particular banneton set, it comes with two bannetons. It has a round banneton, and a banneton is made of rattan, and it also has this linen cover. So you can either have your bread proof in the linen cover or just directly on the, the banneton. And the difference that you'll see in the end product is that if you proof your bread directly on the banneton, you'll have those striations that are caused by the flour rings. In this set, you'll get both a round banneton as well as an oblong banneton. And before I just used to have a round banneton, so all my lobes were round little lobes. However, I have found that now I am gravitating more to the oblong uh, banneton because the bread, as you slice it, the, the largest slice is a little too large, unless you wanna just have that. But this one creates a slice that is a little more to my liking in terms of size. So if you get this particular set, you get both so you can choose. So that comes with both the actual banneton as well as the linen liner. Besides the banetons, you also get a dough whisk and a dough whisk looks like this. Okay. And to be perfectly honest, I don't use a dough whisk. I don't own a dough whisk. This came in the set. I guess now I do. But I really like using my hands. If you don't like feeling the dough, um, then use this. But this would be to mix your starter into your water. Besides the dough whisk, you get a dough scraper and a dough cutter. Now the dough scraper is used uh, to scrape your dough when you are doing the stretch and folds and just to, to mix your dough in the container. And then your dough cutter would be to use after the dough has done the bulk fermentation and it's time to divide your dough. So you'll use a dough cutter for that. You could use a dough scraper, but this one is just sturdier. Okay, in the set you also get Alarm, spelled L-A-M-E, and what it is, is a contraption that is made of razor blades and a handle. You can just take off the razor blade like this and then thread it through, and then your, your blade will be at an angle like this. And what you use this for is to score the bread and that means cutting the bread just before you put it into the oven. What happens when we do score the bread is we are creating an area of least resistance. So when the bread is in the oven and there is something called oven spring, which is the intense heat that causes the bread to rise quickly, the area that has the least resistance is where it's going to split. So you'll have a nice split. Um, rather than wherever the cracks would happen if there were no areas of least resistance. So you get a prettier decorative bread. So in the baking set, you will get a few razor blades as well as the handle, but it looks like this. All right, so that is what you would get in the set. And besides that, for the baking part, we do need parchment paper. I would highly recommend parchment paper for beginners because it's just easier to transport your raw dough on a piece of parchment paper into a very hot cast iron uh, Dutch oven. But once you get a little more experienced, you can omit the parchment paper you can use parchment paper and we use it several times, which I do just to be green. So have some parchment paper on hand and then you'll also need Dutch ovens. The reason for the Dutch oven is to create this intense heat and the intense heat creates steam. So the actual sourdough bread has a 
I'll explain this later, it has a higher hydration than most bread doughs, meaning there's a higher percentage of water to flour than most doughs. And this higher water percentage creates steam in a very hot environment. And the steam produces that lovely crust. Creating that intense heat is important. And the way we are able to do it at home is to have Dutch ovens. This is a regular Dutch oven, which I use, and it's um, a six quart Dutch oven, I believe. Um, and I use this. However, if you don't have any cast iron skillet utensils, what I would recommend you do is buy something like this. So this is on the Amazon site on my website. And the reason I recommend this is because it has both a top, which is actually a skillet, and then you have a bottom, which you can use for stews. So it's multi-purpose. I happen to have this because it was a gift, but if, it, if I didn't have that, I would definitely buy this. Uh, the nice thing about this particular cast iron set is that if you're a beginner, and you don't have parchment paper, the way you actually take the bread from the bottom top and put it into the hot um, cast iron Dutch oven is instead of placing it in the deep part, which I have done and burnt some fingers, this particular skillet comes in handy because what you'll do is put your bread in the shallow pan and then take your Dutch oven pan part and then flip it over and then cover your dough. And this is how you put it into the oven. So it is a lot easier to make bread this way as a beginner than to try to put it into a deep skillet. And definitely if you don't own any cast iron, this is more multifunctional than this. Lastly, we will need some oven gloves because these get extremely hot and we don't need any burnt fingers or hands and be safe. That is all the equipment that we need. A few extra things that I highly recommend is you need a timer, but you can use your phone. But another thing is this whiteboard marker. What I do is when I do the stretch and folds, so a stretch and fold is almost like um, kneading and you'll need to knead this six times during the course of your bread making, which we call bulk fermentation. And I have very often forgotten what number of stretch and fold I'm on. So now what I do is I take my whiteboard marker and I just write it down here as I go along. So that has helped me remember and you know, it just washes off. So this is a nice little trick. And I think that's it in terms of the basic tools and equipment that you'll need for sourdough baking. See you in the next video. More recipes can be found on sammywongskitchen.com or social media. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.